it's March, it's 2024, and that can only mean Hammerhead at the Newark Showground in Nottinghamshire. And the hammer here is from my own personal collection, it's my own Warhammer, uh, but the rest of it belongs to Hammerhead. I'll start with some general shots to give you the idea of the size of the uh, site. Uh, this is the George Stevenson Hall, which is used by both Hammerhead and by the two partisan meetings later in the year. As you can see, big, big hall. Uh, unfortunately, the acoustics, as with many of these large buildings, is atrocious. So I'm doing this first part silent so you can actually hear me. And I'm recording this earlier part of the day when it was still quite busy. Even so, I delayed two hours before I started filming. So to begin with, it was quite banged out. Indeed, as I walked in those doors on the far side, there was actually a stream of people coming out. This is roughly about 12 o'clock. They'd already made their purchases, already hit the uh, bring and buy, and they were nipping out to get food. So we're going to go into live sound in a moment. But this is the interior of the George Stevenson Hall at the Newark Showground. Um, if you're new to the area at all, if you come over here on a Saturday, there's also a very good English Civil War Museum in town. But it's not open on Sunday for Partisan. So here we go. Life sound now. Right, here we are at Hammerhead. First game of the day is the Pegasus Bridge, the capture of the Orne uh, River Bridge on D-Day, and it's been organised by the Doncaster Gentlemen Gamers. And this is an invitation game as part of the Pegasus Bridge campaign. There's the bridge itself. Uh, as I mentioned in my Cavalier report, the original bridge has now been relocated. Um, it became uh, obsolete. It's now actually in an adjacent field. And one of the buildings over here claims to be the uh, first building to be liberated in France on D-Day. Now runs a cafe, I believe. Excellent model. Looks like it's produced in 20 millimeter. There's the paras going in. And somewhere over here is where the hawser gliders would have landed. Crash landed next to the, um, the bridge. The troops jumping out shouting, up the ox and bucks, up the ox and bucks, because it's the Oxfordshire and Buckinghamshire Light Infantry. Um, just so happens my late uncle was uh, part of the regiment and took part in the uh, uh, support, support wave later. So this is Pegasus Bridge, the Doncaster Gentlemen Gamers. Second game of the day, it's the Boondock Saints presenting, I'm not even going to attempt to pronounce that, Are Enteluva, which looks suspiciously fantasy. Yeah, it's Middle Earth. and there's the table. Very, very nice. Swarms of orcs and bad guys coming up this side. As there. And on this side of the river we appear to have an alliance of free peoples. Including down here. This is the Boondock Saints Are Enteluva, which I think must be Elvish. My Elvish isn't that good. Another view of the Boondock Saints game. Defending a river against a vast horde of orcs and bad guys. Oh yes. The uh, forces of uh, the Dark Lord, etc., are not here collecting for the Swiss Red Cross. Another subject close to my heart, Wings of Glory. Got 
a large selection of the aircraft, occasionally play the game myself, and today they're presenting a participation game here. Four scale aircraft. These look to be quite late. I'm seeing Seaman Shuckets down there, and on the far side looks like looks like DH4s. Yeah, possible DH4s or Bristol fighters over there. Got cloud for obstacles. Definitely a Seaman Shucker, D3 or D4. The intriguingly named WABC, otherwise known as the Women's Auxiliary Balloon Corps, are defending the Great Wood in what is clearly a fantasy game. Either that or the Women's Auxiliary Balloon Corps have got themselves wrapped up in a very strange war. The skull mountain there appears to be crying flames. And the figures are very small. They look likely between about 10 millimeter. Nice movement trays and um, removing removing modules as they get hit. Distance there. Major event. Looks like flames are going down left, right, and centre. So this is the Women's Auxiliary Balloon Women's Auxiliary Balloon Corps defending the Great Wood. I assume the Great Wood is this patch of trees on this side. Cinematic Western gunfight rules by the War Game Shop, and they're doing the Magnificent Seven. In 28mm. Very nice buildings. I'm just going to change position. Sheriff's Office bar and um, judging from the size of the building, the undertaker is very busy. So this is uh, your Magnificent Seven Cinematic Western Gunfight Rules by the War Game Shop. We have an interesting table here from Anschluss War Games. Big display of books and vehicles at that end close up there. I can't get all the way around there because of the bodies. And in front of us, a very fetching North African, looks like World War II. Yep. Small Italian fort over there. Over there, what looks like a raiding force coming in on that side. Looks suspiciously LRDG, Long Range Desert Group. Right here, we have the Veterans War Games Association. Gone very, very sci-fi, very futuristic. Looks like a large number of hover tanks. Trying to work out what the rules are. Looks like Bleak Bane's Galaxy Guide, first edition. So, um, yeah, I would say definitely high, high science fiction. A lot of hexagon terrain. And some very interesting models. Yeah, don't see many of them. Figures look to be about six millimetre or so. Right, 
This is the KB Club doing a modern, it's called the Maneuver Group. And let's have a shifty. What's the scenario here? Yeah, it's just a Cold War scenario. Cold War scenario. Yeah. Were you here last year? Yes, we were. I think I filmed you here last year. Sure I did. Lots of nice hex terrain. The uh, NATO are up on the hilltop there with some nice tanks dug in. And beyond that, they're defending an airfield with... Um, a very futuristic aircraft on it. What's that? Yeah, it's a stealth. Okay. Right. So this is the KB Club Maneuver Group. Right, this is the League of Augsburg Club. Uh, interesting, there you've got English Civil War troops versus Native Africans. This apparently is Prince Rupert's expedition to the Gambia in Africa. Civil War musketeers over there facing Gambian native troops there and then round here looks like one of their ships has come a cropper it's basically sunk down to its uh, keel in the river the local hippos are starting to, uh, oh and a crocodile, oh several crocodiles, are starting to pay some uh, attention to it. And unless I miss my guess, unless I miss my guess, they've got some sort of diving bell going down, so whether they're trying to recover, what's the, di is that a diving bell they're trying to? It is in fact a diving bell. Right, they're trying to recover lost treasure from the boat, yeah? Close up on Prince Rupert's forces. Strangely, not a pikeman amongst them, it's all musketeers. I didn't think the Gambian uh, natives would have much cavalry. So, basically, dismounted pirates, dismounted seamen, and possibly a few uh, irregular infantry in there. I say yes. And there is the, uh, the Gambian natives trying to contest their uh, appearance here. That's the League of Augsburg Club. Right, this is Pulp Alley producing the Blue Island of the Broken Unicorns. Some kind of treasure hunt. Um, suspiciously 1930s aircraft buzzing over the top. And underneath got various uh, bits nicked from the local aquarium shop. And they appear to be hunting uh, some kind of treasure down there. This is a men with miniature men inviting people to play something dicey. This being a large scale, large scale World War II. Very nice models. And lest my eyes deceiveth me, there's a stalk creeping down the road over there. German infantry beside it. You're determined to get in shot, aren't you? I might as well get you. Go on. Right, you are the you are the men with miniature men, yes? Okay. There's always someone that wants to get in front of the camera. I couldn't resist a close-up of the piece while. The uh, Cafe Rene over there, nice buildings. This will be 132, 135. 132, 135, yeah, I thought so. Right, this is the Leicester Fat Cats, and they're doing a participation game called Silver Bayonets. 
which appears to be set sometime in the 18th century. There's an inn over there full of people. And encounters taking place outside. So this is the Leicester Fat Cats, spelled with a P. And they're playing Silver Bayonets as the invitation game. Interesting and busy game. Right, this is the Leica Stonewall War Games group. And we seem to be in with a Spanish conquistador. Now, uh, I'm not well up on my Aztecs, Toltecs, Mixtecs and Mayans. So I can't tell you which nation they're representing here. But it looks suspiciously Aztec, judging from the colours. Great multi-level temple over there. Various buildings in front. The natives are mustering here. And the conquistadors are just below me. I'm going to shift, shift the camera. Conquistador, Cavalry and Pike going in there. Various native troops. You have to remember that the Spanish actually used a number of the um, uh, local tribes on their own side. So these could be native auxiliaries. Over here we've got two Spanish ships. Here and here. The Spanish have managed to unload some very large artillery there. They also appear to be enduring a local attack, even this far to the, this close to the beach. So back up here we have the main temple. Right, I've just been corrected by one of the club members. All the natives got here are hostile today. Uh, all the buildings have been made uh, uh, by the club. And yes, they are Aztec. So the Spanish are dealing with an awful lot of bad guys today. Unit Spanish Cavalry here, storming around the corner, and Unit Spanish Infantry here. And guess what? They've got an organ gun. Right, this is a Gripping Beast, uh, another invitation game, participation game, inviting you to play it's a French word, I'm going to have a go at it. Ecorchure, Ecorchure. It's a scenario for the Ecorchure skirmish rules for the Hundred Years' War. Nice, very nice models. like a skirmish outside of a siege. We've got trebuchet set up there. They've even got duck boards to walk on. Looks like they've got a bit of a camp set up over there. A bit more of a, a siege camp. Neatly palisaded with tents set up over there. Large pervases, trebuchet. What else you want? Another gripping beast invitation game, Zero Hour, which is clearly set in World War One. Four dice, Arch. 
trench system with uh, artillery over there. Various ruined buildings. Flying high over the battle. None other than the Red, the red Baron. Appears to be French on my right. There. With a Draken balloon up. No man's land. French, German trenches. And then we got a early German tank there, waiting to come in. And two French tanks. And two smaller ones are Renault FTs. And despite the fact that Britain invented the first tank, the French invented the first tank turret. Uh, we were a bit late in the game on that one. Right, this is the Forest Outlaws Gaming Club, who meet in Mansfield. And today we're in Doctor Who territory. Swarms of Daleks. Advancing on what appears to be a unit base or unit headquarters. These appear to be old style Daleks, they can't fly. That's the unit base. And this is the Forest Outlaws Gaming Club. Hit. I hit on the five, then I roll the six, then I roll another six. You've got overall frames, so yeah, so it's hitting these. The unit base appears to have a V2. Don't forget you've got two lots of cover in between to shoot them. Because you've got to get through the sandbags through that one to get to the AFC. Okay, just was just puzzling over the appearance of a V2 rocket. Uh, just been told it's not the unit. It's more like Wehrmacht. This is Daleks versus World War II Germans. Not quite sure which side I'd be rooting for here. Yes, I thought the troops looked suspiciously non-unit. So we've got some fully tracked uh, German lorries over there. And off in the distance, a pre-primed V2 rocket. So this is the Forest Outlaws Gaming Club, Daleks versus World War II Germans. So I'm not sure which side they'll be rooting for it. Here endeth part one. It's a big event. There is going to be a part two going up, hopefully within 24 hours. I can only apologise to anybody whose tables I didn't get to. It's a big, busy event. and There's only so much time and so much energy I have these days. So um, this is part one. Part two will follow shortly. This has been a Warspite production. If you've enjoyed this, please leave a thumbs up. If you've really enjoyed it, please feel free to subscribe. And I look forward to seeing you next time. This is Warspite out, and have a very good day.